That's right, my Z10 is dead. And I don't mean that like some sort of strange metaphor. Two weekends ago, when I brought it out for a ride early in the morning, I rode it barely across the street and all of a sudden, you know, it started to spaz out. I had to get off and drag it out of the way of the incoming traffic. It's uh, not something you want to do first thing on a Saturday morning. So, after a few minutes of violent shaking, the scooter ceased to work uh, and the wheel locks up. And also, the wheel does not consistently turn on either. Um, sometimes it shows you the battery is dead. Other time, it does come on, except of course it doesn't balance itself whatsoever. So I figure, what better time to do the post 1000 mile review of my favorite electric unicycle, the 9Bot Z10. Roll the music! As always, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and like the video. This was the start of my weekly trip out to Flushing with Kelly, and I had to run back to the house to get my IPS i5, which I had mostly relegated to shorter distance run around the neighborhood more recently. And of course, I immediately contacted Jason at eWheel to let him know about the issue that I had encountered with the Z10. And more importantly, I also went on the Telegram app and whine about my problem to anyone who would listen in the NYC EUC collective group which by the way if you're in the New York City area and rides in EUC you should totally join aside from the animated cat emojis thank you Chris it is also one of the largest EUC telegram group and an amazing support base so good in fact the Russian are signing on in droves but strangely, they haven't started asking us to vote for Trumps yet, in time perhaps. Since unlike you spoiled, boosted, and one-wheel people, the company that make our rides don't really care about us. Like the baby sea turtle left to hatch on a hostile beach, scrambling towards the ocean only to be picked off by predators were left on our own devices once we've taken delivery of the wheel regardless of whether it works or not. All right, maybe I was being a little bit overly dramatic. However, after riding it for a thousand miles, I've grown quite attached to my Z10 and its untimely demise is a little bit disturbing to say the least. Now the Z10 is an unquestionably unique wheel, one that rides like no other electric unicycle, and regardless of how you feel about it, it changed the playing field in the EUC world as other companies had since scrambled to imitate its design by fitting wider tires to their own model. Such as the Gotway, Nikola, or the recent favorite, the Kingsound 16X, and with, in addition to diameter, is now a factor commonly discussed in evaluating the right characteristic of a wheel. But the Z10 is a deeply divisive wheel. To start out with, if you're interested in buying one, well you can't. The only dealer that had ever offered it for sale, which was eWheel, after having experienced a slew of problems and issues with its initial batch of Z10, and being absolutely stonewalled by Naiba over its attempt to find corrective measure to the problems, decide in the end to not only discontinue its sales, but also terminate their relationship with Naiba altogether. In addition, after several months of usage and with the help of EcoDrift, a large Russian dealer who also sells the Z10, multiple reoccurring issues were identified, including ghost string that saps the battery even while the wheel is off, which if left unattended for long periods of time, can force it into a deep sleep stage, which can potentially damage the batteries and weaknesses with the soldering on the control boards which leads to meltdown and may very well be the issue my Z10 suffered. Now if that sounds like an angry dumpster fire, 
it was mostly because of the lack of response or even acknowledgement on the part of Nightbot, as it is not at all uncommon for initial batch of product to require style attention on the part of the manufacturer. Instead, Ninebot provided a fix for a minor headlights issue and update the trolley handle, both of which, by the way, is only available in the Chinese market. So from what I have heard, a possible culprit is the uh, control board. Um, there's apparently a connection on it that's prone to burn out because of the, the soldering on it was poor. So what we're going to try to do is to open it up and see whether or not we can confirm if the board has indeed been burned, take a photo, and then send it to Jason uh, so that he can have a better sense of what is the potential problem. But despite its flaws, I still think of the Z10 as a beautifully designed and engineered wheel through and through. Let me show you why. Beneath the side cover, you'll find a well-organized set of wiring and carefully routed weather seals, with another cover protecting the control board. Now I am an idiot when it comes to electronics, but even I recognize when attention and thoughtfulness were applied rigorously to a product. The intricate and integrated layout serve no purposes, neither does the millimeter gain by recessing the battery compartment, but this is what you do when you care to create something beautiful to you, even if no one were to ever have the opportunity to appreciate it. And based on the thread on the EUC foreign, the potentially burned circuit lies just beneath it. And here we go. The pattern matches the photo I have seen on the foreign. Hopefully this is the culprit. Now I have no idea if that is indeed the problem. And I can expect zero support from Ninebot. Since they take no responsibility in any wheels they sell here in the US. But thankfully, Jason of eWheel came to the rescue once again. I showed him photograph of the burnout circuit and he agreed that they resemble the control board meltdown that he had seen in other example of the faulty Z10 that he had worked with in the past. And on top of it, he offered to send me a replacement board the very next day. I think I have made it plenty clear in past episode of exactly how I felt about the Z10. Its massive 4 inch wide tire has a presence that I had not experienced on any other electric unicycle except for the Gotway Monster. Yes, the 16X sort of came close, but the operating word there is close. The tubeless tire is also stiffer and provide more resistance even when the wheel is tilted off axis, which reinforce a sense of stability, regardless of surface condition. Given the tire's stiffness and its squat proportion, the Z10 does have a tendency to follow wavy road surfaces and wobble occasionally, but it also self-correct and over time I have learned to trust it and now mostly keep my angle loose and just ride it out when it does occur. Carving with the wheel when you have the room for it is deeply satisfying and make you look forward to every steep turn you encounter. It makes me feel as if I hang off the side of this wheel like a Moto GT rider. Habitually, I kept my right knee against the top of the wheel and use it as an additional point of leverage. And like a bucking bronco, the Z10 will fight you for supremacy, which makes it all the more satisfying when you have the control of this beast of a wheel. And it is this balance that makes the ride so very entertaining. Despite its slower speed, no, the Z10 is not a fast wheel, and the 28 mile per hour top speed looks tame in comparison to wheels like the MSX or the Monster. But this is a different kind of wheel. Kane is 
lupus at the Canyon Mountain is likely one of the most unusual ski trail you'll ever encounter. It starts in an unassuming ditch on the side of the main trail that is often easily missed, but quickly turns into a steep, narrow, and winding canyon that requires you to duck underneath falling trees as well as carve at a moment's notice around blind corners. It is a high speed, dangerous, and very sketchy run. The equivalent of the Death Star trench run rendered in stone, ice, and snow. And I love every single minute of riding this trail. And that is how I would describe the Z10. It is the double black diamond of the EUC world. This is not a wheel for someone who have no prior experience with an electric unicycle, nor the willingness to thoroughly research all the issues associated and am ready to tackle them from day one. It is not a wheel you should or can casually walk into a store and just buy, but for the most part, the ridership had accumulated enough experience with the wheel to identify most of the issues and documented fixes. But it also comes from a company that have for all intents and purposes abandoned any responsibility they have with it. And you are on your own in all sense of the word. Yet, it is a beautiful wheel, both in design and ride experiences. There was this episode of This American Life where a rancher talked lovingly about the beauty of his cloned Texas Longhorn called Second Chance. After having been gored for the second time and sent to the ER, I feel the same way about the Z10. I love this wheel despite the fact that occasionally, ever so lovingly, it'll stick those horns right into my guts. As always, thank you for sticking it through all the way to the end. Leave your comments below and if you enjoyed my video, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Until the next video, thank you.